be like, beep, and then like, <laughs> what am I going to ask you? You like jazz? And then you finally get into the actual interview. <laughs> Hey everybody, Caleb here, and today I am rejoined by Troy and his custom guitar we built. We started on this almost a year ago now, mm -hmm. and I'd say seven months ago when part five came out, I promised there'd be a follow-up video with Troy playing it. So, seven months <laughs> later, here we go. But, Troy, how's it been for you? It's been really great. Uh, seriously, the only guitar I play these days, so... I haven't played anything else. <laughs> That's a good sign. Uh, before we get into playing, and we are going to do like a whole rundown with everything Troy's using because I did build him a pedal board. You can't see it, but it's on the floor. I'm going to do a little touch up on Troy's guitar, uh, make sure everything's looking good. The neck straight, the frets are still level and nice and crowned and polished, and round it over on the ends. You know, it's been seven months. It mm -hmm. could use a little bit of a touch up, probably, especially for the first one we ever built. <laughs> Yeah, so, kind of as the as everything's finally settled in, and I'm sure the next bowed and yeah. everything's. I don't think I'm it's sure too bad. I bet the frets have jumped too a little bit. Yeah, because every the wood dries and shrinks, mm -hmm. and especially because it's been winter time. I'm yep. sure I could use a little bit of setup. So we're gonna do a little bit of setup first, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna we're gonna play a little. I also haven't cleaned it off, like the fretboard at all. So it, it could use a cleaning. No, you gotta keep that. Keep, grind. The, keep the keep the dirt. The grind it helps the tone. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> tone comes from all the dirt. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I bought all this expensive wood to then put dirt on it, so it sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the old ones sound better. It's because they're so yes. much dirty. Correct. <laughs> all right. Well, I think the next clip we'll go over to my desk, and I'll set this down, and I'll start working on it. Um, it shouldn't take too long, just a couple of touch-ups, and you might get a little few tips about what you can do to touch yours up and keep it in good shape. So, here we go. So I've set this down here on my desk. It's actually looking pretty good. Uh, the frets have sprouted just a little bit, but you can't feel them too, too much. I think I'm just going to lightly hit them with the file and then round That's the corners right. off. Oh, yeah, I'm going to hit the whole guitar with the file several times. It's called... Uh, Weathering. What what do they call it when the Fender Custom Shop does it? Relicking. Relicking, yep. <laughs> I'm going to relic it a little bit with my file. No. <laughs> what do they call it when you overpay for it is what I should have said. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that at home with a blowtorch. Why am I paying you? <laughs> I'm going to try not to uh, waste these strings. According to Troy, they're not that old, which means they're less than a year old. <laughs> Alright, so I've got this kind of taped up so the strings are out of the way. I'm going to take my file and knock these edges off just a hair. Um, they're pretty good. It's just 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 a little bit. I think it's gonna be that slight improvement. I did check the The straightness of the neck truss rod wise and it's looking Really good. I checked it under tension. So I'm sure that this is sitting basically flat now. I'll double check here in a second The frets are not super out of level, which isn't all that big of a surprise for these stainless frets. They, uh, <laughs> they're they really hard. They'd be really hard to put out of level. But a couple of them, they rock just a little bit, so I will uh, do a real light level on them. So these are doing pretty good. I think we've improved this a little. And that being not that bad, a little is all the improvements you get. Uh, I'm going to level these. I'm going to start with the file. I may actually go over to the level beam with the sandpaper on it, just because these are really close, and I just want them to be perfect. I can usually get them basically perfect with this. 
and these stainless frets are so hard, this just slides. So, now that I know the leveling beam, I am going to crown these frets again. They don't look too terribly far off, because I didn't take a whole lot off, but we'll crown them, then they'll be perfect, which is where the goal is. And while I do that, I will also go through and uh, round those edges off. Since I worked on them a little bit with the file, there's going to be some flat spots, so I'll use my little fret end dressing file and knock those off as well. So I've crowned them, I've been polishing them with the sandpaper, I'm now working on my micro mesh pads. These should take this to a nice, really high shine. And I'm not worried about the fretboard at all, because I'm going to come back with a razor blade to clean up the fretboard, and then we'll oil the board and the neck. All right, so between me and Troy, we've got these all polished up now. I'm going to take a very sharp razor blade and scrape between the frets to mark off all this gunk that we've got from sanding and any uh, old gunk that's built up. That way the fretboard will look nice and new. Why is this crazy, 
Surprised. Well, you see maybe, how maybe they started popping out. No, they're just they're I'm I'm scraping off just the very bit. See how much whiter they are though? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's why we do this. I mean it does it takes a little bit off, but it's not enough to matter. Mm -hmm. Pretty funny because people are like, what guitar is that? I'm like, me. <laughs> like, it's got my name on it. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what? I think that's cool. Yeah, it is freaking I mean, cool. I've never seen a guitar like that. Well, there ain't another one that exists. This is a good project. Tell me what liquids are over there in those cans. Linseed, lacquer thinner, denatured alcohol. Denature. Give me the denatured alcohol. Well, so I wiped the back down with the denatured alcohol just to take off any grime because it's an unfinished neck. And I mean totally unfinished. We've been putting oil on it, but it's been seven months since its last application. So I wiped it down with this to take off any grime. Now I'm gonna do the uh, fretboard and then I'll flip it back over and we'll do the back. You gotta make sure you wipe off the excess, otherwise you have a very oily experience <laughs> playing it. <laughs> Alright, we'll flip it over and do the neck. That's dark. <laughs> That's what color it should be! <laughs> <laughs> My dad watches these videos. <laughs> Does he watch them regularly? I don't know. He should leave comments. I'll <laughs> pin them. <laughs> Whatever he says. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. Troy wants me to show his buckle rash. I don't know how well you can see it. I'll try to catch it in a light. I'm proud of that. Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, you know, when you put it in there yourself, that means it's being played, and that's, I don't know, the biggest compliment an instrument can get is it's actually played. That's about it for the extent of this. I think we're going to check the intonation after I tune it back up, but, you know, this is just a, a little bit of a... <laughs> you felt it. <laughs> it's probably still going to do it, but it's not a big deal. Just a little bit of a cleanup time. I didn't get the truss rod cover because it's raw wood. Yeah, that's the same color, so I can say that that's where supposed to be. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and string this thing up. Um, if the intonation is bad, I'll show you a change in it. Otherwise, I think we're going to play it. So, Troy told me that the intonation was a little flat, and after checking, it's a little flat pretty much across the board. And flat's easy to fix on this, because that means this bridge needs to go forward just a little bit. And to do that, I can just back out these two screws that are on the actual posts and that'll allow the bridge to float forward just a little bit. I'm not going to do too much at once. And we'll check it all again. And I tune it all up again. It's a pretty flat across the board. Yeah. That's why I was like, because I played it about, because it was, I noticed that whenever I first started playing it, um, but I also didn't want to say anything because you had been super frustrated just trying to get it to me. And so I literally learned just like, I started just bending a little bit whenever I was playing up there just to bend it into pitch. <laughs>
hope this doesn't undo a bunch of muscle memory for me. <laughs> I kind of hope it does. Oh no! Now I'm playing sharp. Caleb, put it back. <laughs> I like when you suffer. <laughs> Yay! Now we just come in on the yeah now east side. Well, low e. Yeah, I'll come in a little bit on that side and then. Whew, man, you know when it doesn't move much and I've already adjusted it twice, it makes you go, "Am I doing this right?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, and then I keep saying it, and it's exactly what I said, but it's just not. I think we do fine adjustments now. We're really getting close to end range here, so I think I'm gonna adjust the adjusters because G is right on, E is right on, B is barely off. There you go, there's a little bit of a... <laughs> how fidgety intonation can be. It's a lot of moving these back and forth and if you move the whole bridge and you gotta adjust them all fine tuner anyways, we got them all set up. This thing is playing better than it did when I gave it to you the first time. <laughs> I haven't checked the action, but it looks It's fine. normal. The action was great. Good, so I think we're done here. Uh, we'll go get set up to play this a little bit and then uh, film it, yeah. And I say, well, you just saw me work on Troy's guitar, and we've been playing it and everything else. We've got a little bit of music for the end of this video, but I thought we'd do maybe a rundown and show you all the stuff that Troy's been running through since we brought it up. Um, I'm just now realizing your amp almost looks like it's missing a couple to make a funny face. <laughs> we put some tape on the amp so we could uh, mic it a little more accurately. That was, we were testing the spots. You know, we don't do anything without reason around here, except for all the things we do for no reason. Um, so I'm going to go portable handheld here for a minute. We can show off Troy's pedal board. And I built that <laughs> for Troy. And Troy, you want to kind of go through what you got on there? Well, firstly, ignore the scratches and dents I've already put on it. Um, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> That's what she's for. Um, so... A lot of these pedals I've had, well, for a little bit now. Actually, these two are the, the one of the, I think the Blues Driver here is the first pedal I ever bought, and I love this thing to death. It pretty much is always on. Um, I, I don't think I ever turn it off, ever. I just love the way it sounds. Um, pretty much everything I play goes through that. Um, sometimes I'll, like, turn down the gain and stuff if I need to play more clean, but it pretty much stays on. And then my really broken wah... As you can see, <laughs> the, uh, you know, whatever in there that's supposed to help it stay up is broken. And I have yet to take it apart because I don't take care of my things. Nobody, I'm, nobody I'm said not, we were high-end musicians. Yeah, I'm not the one who broke it. I did buy it used. Um, here's my cheap volume pedal. Um, I needed something when I was on no income. Um, <laughs> then I've got just a Behringer... Uh, delay that's eventually going to get replaced sometimes i swap that out um for my chorus pedal here um which i was surprised about like how much i use chorus um not like like a super high amount of it but uh just pretty subtle and it i think it really like adds a lot to your tone and flushes it out and then the mod station that does a lot of weird things <laughs> i to be honest I don't know everything that it does. Um, <laughs> right now it's on a setting I like, and it also stays on all the time. Um, you'll, you'll find that there's not a whole lot of variation in the things that I do <laughs> with my pedals. Uh, they pretty much stay where they're at because I like them there. I can relate. Mine have felt on them so they don't move in the bag. <laughs> and then the last, this, this was given to me, this Hall of Fame, a fantastic reverb pedal. Lots of different options on it. Um, the music I was playing before... Um, it was like worship music, so it's like an ungodly amount of reverb. 
Um, <laughs> I would have said it's a godly amount of reverb. That's probably fair. <laughs> but it, you know, you, they want you to play a note and it, you know, rings out for four business days. So that's the kind of reverb we got on there. And then I'm playing through um, my Fender Frontman 212R. Um, another thing on this that's broken is my spring reverb. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs both, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not particularly a fan of spring reverb anyway. I don't play a whole lot of surf guitar and stuff. Um, I have yet to decide where I like all of my my mids, my highs, and you know all that stuff. Um, I haven't played with it enough yet. I'm still figuring my way around my own rig. I've only had this stuff for about a year. Um, but I love having an actual guitar amp because previously I was playing through a bass amp, and that's not the way to do things. Well, it beats the bass amp. And I know somebody's going to ask, this is a Shure... SM57. SM57. Uh, this is mine. This is what I've used to do any electric guitar I've done so far has been this mic'd up to my amp, which is the Boss Katana. So we'll cover my stuff a little bit more later. But we've got the SM57 there for Troy today. Which is what we used for all of the music today, mm -hmm. except for the drums, <laughs> which were electronic. You get what you get. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. You want to make some noise? Yeah, sure. <laughs> basically right now that's my substitute for a boost right now um, I've got a boost pedal that I have yet to put on this board I am waiting for money to afford a power supply so I can power more pedals than I have <laughs> that and I think he needs a little more velcro that is true I'm out of velcro <laughs> but uh, so another uh, question -y thing that everybody asks is why one pickup um, I love having just one pickup um, as you kind of maybe have figured out, I very I, I do very few changes to my tone. Um, like stuff gets added slowly, um, but once I figure out some like something I like, it stays that way. Set it and forget it. Yeah, and yeah. I I don't like even even my like bridge setting on the tone knob. I or excuse me, the neck setting on the tone knob. I very rarely use like probably. 90%, 95% of what I play is just like tone knob all the way up. And Same with the volume, yeah? Yeah, volume stays all yeah, the way up. Yeah, you hardly ever touch them. That's what a volume pedal is for. All right, so I don't know. Let's keep talking about the guitar here because lots of people asked about the reverse headstock. Uh, Why the reverse headstock? So the first guitar I ever, first electric guitar I ever purchased um, was a Washburn... Is it a Sona Master, something like that? It's like a Strat, but yeah, it was a it was like a Super Strat. Yeah. Um, so it had two singles and a humbucker, I think. Yep. And it had a lefty headstock on it, and this bright yellow neck, and it was fantastic. It was um, a nice guitar. And I just got used to the lefty headstock. I didn't even realize it was a lefty headstock until after I got it home and <laughs> went to tune it, and I was like. Oh, wait a minute. That's I, very strange. I think in the picture of us in the yearbook, that's the guitar you're holding. Yes. <laughs> yep. And I unfortunately no longer have that guitar. I gave it away. Wow. I might put that picture <laughs> of us in the yearbook in the video <laughs> just so everybody gets to see. Oh, great. Because I think I'm holding that one. Yeah, the Hondo. And you've got the blue one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I just really like the lefty headstock. Um, and I also liked the idea of putting the Firebird headstock on the Les Paul body. Um, I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of the like typical Les Paul headstock. The 3x3? Three three. Yeah, I'm not necessarily a fan of those. Plus, I knew this is kind of what I wanted. And I think it like 
It makes it custom. It makes it mine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's definitely yours. And, you know, from my point of view, these tune better than the 3 by 3s because those angles that the strings have to take out of the nut, they bind in that nut so bad. This straight through tunes a lot better, holds tune a lot better. So I guess we're just about done here. Uh, you know, we've kind of gone over all the Troy stuff. I think I've fulfilled my promise of a follow-up video on Troy's guitar. Um, so we've got a little bit of music to close out the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it. It was us made in a couple of hours, so it's not professional, but it's professional. <laughs> I hated that joke. <laughs> That was awful. Well, it was off the cuff, so <laughs> I just came up with that. It was pretty bad. <laughs> so we're going to try to get maybe a little more music in the future. I hope that I'll be able to share with you if it turns out any good at all. So, you know, it's like 50-50 chance. But hope you enjoy this little outro. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.